Hello netizens hope you all are doing good what is the one thing that comes to mind when i say credit card i'm pretty sure most of you will say shopping most of us have used credit cards at some point in our life some even use them on a daily basis as well after making any transaction you might have received a message saying have you transacted inr xxx if not reply no This proper message is nothing but a model created for the bank to avoid phishing activities. You might have all seen Jamatra, which is on Netflix. The series portrays how the fraudsters fish you in phishing activities. Back in the 2000s, every person in the country had at least one cell phone, which created an opportunity to commit untraceable transactions through a cell phone. So, how does mobile phishing takes place? The fraudster tricks the victims by sharing their personal information like their name, bank details and card details. Phishing through a mobile phone is different from phishing through an email ID. It includes SMS, MMS and other messaging platforms as well as email. They want to use personal contacts to take advantage of people's trust in social networks. For example, a parent would interact with a message to their personal reasoning. This is a trick the fraudsters use. Employees also find it easier to perform tasks on a mobile device than on a desktop, depositing checks via mobile banking app. So, organizations need to stay on guard to keep up the phishing threats that target mobile users more and more. Earlier companies used to spend a lot of money on security solutions like secure email gateways, inbox scans and training for end users. Still these methods are too focused on email and don't protect modern forms of messaging. As attackers continue to use sophisticated mobile phishing strategies, the new battleground is how to stop sophisticated phishing attacks on mobile. So, how does mail phishing takes place? A victim gets a message that looks like it came from a person or organization they know. As a result, either a malicious file attachment or links to malicious websites are used as a method to attack. The goal is to install malware on user's device or to take the victim to a fake website. People set up fake websites to trick people into giving out their personal and financial information like passwords, account IDs or credit card numbers. How does new age technology help the banks? According to the survey, phishing has caused organization to lose an average of 5% of their money and some organization have lost more than 5%. Banks are using data science and AI to stop people from committing fraud through phishing. Before data science and AI, the bank used old methods like the bank used standard algorithms made by programmers based on the rules of a specific bank. The model would set the transaction limit for a certain amount of time. If the transaction amount is more than the limit, the bank won't let the pay send the money to the recipients. For example, if a person has a monthly transaction limit of rupees 1 lakh and he faces a medical emergency where he needs 1.5 lakh to repay the bills, but he won't be able to withdraw because of the transaction limit. He has to go to the bank and take out the money to pay his bills. It's a problem that the account holder has to deal with, which is unreliable. When someone tells the bank about an unusual transaction, the bank employees may have to do a lot of work to find the transaction. The bank worker needs to stop from what he or she is doing and look into all of the customer's recent transactions. If the customer updates their passbook often, it could make less work for the bank employee. If not, it adds to the workload of the employees. The entire process was time consuming and at times despite the employee being unable to finish his or her task, the bank had to pay their salaries. The bank was unable to uncover fraud that went beyond the regulations. A fraudster may steal 20,000 rupees from five separate credit cards that do not exceed their limits and the banks would be unaware. Data science and AI on the other hand have made it easier for bankers to stop fraudsters from committing crimes and automate this security process. The data scientist has made a model for the banks that is unique and works well. As the bank has a lot of data in its storage room, these data are fed into the model and people train the ML to predict the unusual activities. A data scientist will sort the data into categories like frequent transaction, irregular transaction, defaulters, users who travel a lot, users who do a lot of transaction with huge amounts, users who do small transactions regularly and users who do small transactions irregularly. To automate this process, the data scientist usually employs supervised ML models. It falls under a classification problem where the transactions are categorized into genuine and fraudulent. 
The model is also trained to be updated with every transaction done by the user. If the model predicts any unusual transaction, it notifies the bank and the account holder while blocking the transaction towards recipients. The bank will verify with the account holders about transactions to complete the payment. Data scientist uses various models like random forest support vector classification and others which has accuracy of 99%. Hope this video made all of you understand the phishing techniques and how data science pitched in and took our stress away. Do let us know if you have faced any such incident in your life as the more we share the more we spread awareness. Don't forget to hit like button and do subscribe to learn with and don't forget to hit the bell icon.